So as far as what you have with Edge guys right now, uh, obviously you moved on from Tank. Do you feel there's enough with obviously Charles Harris mm -hmm. and I guess you added Trent Harris and the mm -hmm. other guys you have in that container? Well, getting right ready for Baltimore, we're going to need, it's going to be all hands on deck, you know, in terms of the edge in the run game, edge in the pass game. So, you know, we got, we got, you know, a tough task in front of us in terms of preparing for those guys. And, you know, whether it's the backs, the quarterback, whoever means the tight end setting the edge. And we're going to do our best this week to get the guys on the team ready for that. And we're going to just work, work, it, work it, work it. And just so that by the time we get to Sunday, we're ready to go. Patrick, you like the fact that you get Baltimore in the opener because Lamar Jackson presents such a unique challenge as opposed to having him, let's say, middle of the season? I just like having the job, so you know, yeah, I like I like being getting ready for an opener. But um, whoever it is, every week's so different in the league. I mean, the opener, you know, obviously there's some different challenges with the opener. There's less film um, in terms of what guys actually are going to do. Obviously, as you go in the season, you got more, um, you know, you have more with in terms of tendencies and things of that nature. But I'm, I'm excited for us having our first game, our first game being at home, first time to compete, and it, you know, and. I'm just looking forward to the challenge, and obviously, you know, the whole Baltimore offense presents a challenge. Whether it's the offensive line, uh, the quarterback, the receivers, the backs, you know, the offensive coordinator, Greg Roman. He's a great. I mean, I mean, he's one of the best coordinators in the league, in my opinion, in terms of how he schemes it up. So, and Coach Harbaugh as a head coach. I mean, it, it's a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. So, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. From a personal level, what's, mm -hmm. what's the level of excitement in your first NFL game as a I mean, you know, it's. It's a collective thing, so you know we just you know been in the league. This is my 11th year, I believe. I'm excited about every opportunity to compete. I'm excited about today, I mean, <laughs> and whether it's coordinator or not, I'm excited about how you know we're trying to win today in terms of preparing. So I'm, I'm excited about when I'm done with this and being get back to get back in the meeting room and start preparing a little bit more. So I'm always excited. I got a job and I love I love what I do. How much? How much percentage of your looks? Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, we're game planning right now for uh, Baltimore for Sunday. So, I mean, who knows? I mean, the percentage could be 50%. It could be 90%. Who? I mean, who knows? It could be 10%. Who knows? I mean, we're still not. We're still in the process of game planning for those guys. So, you know, I know this. We're, we're going to put um, put out there what we think is best to win that game uh, on Sunday and what we think is best for each situation. And we'll see where that, how it looks when everybody sees it, I guess. What has you most excited about this defense? Most excited, uh, their willingness to come in and work every day and buying into what Coach Flores has spoken about in terms of us being tough, disciplined, being smart, um, and really the mantra of trying to get better every day. You know, that's. That's probably, I told the guys that, I said, we're trying to get better every day and there's evidence of that on tape, evidence in the classroom, evidence when you speak to them in the cafeteria, the football conversations going on. So to me, that's been critical. And I think that's why I'm most excited because if we get better every day, we got, we got a chance, we got a chance. It, the decision to move on from TJ, I mean, I'm not gonna have you get into the reasons, but mm -hmm. it seems to me that it would provide some clarity then at the strong safety position. And okay. Rashad, do you think he's now your Ripper down strong safety? I think that, you know, however we deploy the guys, strong safety, free safety, backers, what, what, however however you guys see those positions, you know, Rashad's a good football player. He's going to help us win football games, and we're going to put him out there where we think uh, we think he can help us the most. Uh, with TJ, uh, was it just, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, the, the little mm -hmm. production was what you guys were expecting? Was it to be quite honest with you, right now, my focus is on Baltimore and the guys that are here right now. You know, TJ did a lot of good things for us, did, worked hard, but like my focus is on Baltimore. I'm not smart enough to be able to think about last week and, and focus on Baltimore with Jackson, deal with Yonda, deal with, you know, the receivers, you know, I mean, the back, it's a bunch of stuff going on in my head. I wish I could give you more, but that's where my focus is. What impressed you most about Orchard this summer? Orchard this summer. I mean, just again, he's one of the guys. I mean, it, it sounds cliche, but the guys came in. He worked hard. Um, you know, he accepted the challenges we gave him in terms of you know, uh, being a physical player, uh, giving us some pass rush, and he's shown evidence of that. And he's worked hard. With uh, with Eric, uh, it seemed when he was out there, he, he Eric. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it seemed like he, he 
key splash for you guys. Keeping him healthy, I'm sure, is a huge priority for this team. Mm -hmm. If he is in there and he's able to contribute, what does that mean? I mean, nothing's more important, and Coach Flores has probably said it, nothing more is more important than the health of our football team overall. Individual players, the whole team, coaches, we got to be healthy mentally and physically. Uh, I think Eric's physical nature has shown up on tape. Um, I know he's, um, you know, he's probably excited. You have to talk to him, but excited about the opportunity this week in terms of uh, preparing for Baltimore. But his physical nature, um, his ability to cover guys and be physical at the line of scrimmage, that's the stuff we covet. And I mean, he's been doing a good job of that for us. I know when we, uh, no, mm -hmm. when we spoke back in the I don't know, spring, mm -hmm. you had expressed confidence that your system would help mm -hmm. benefit in terms of pass rush mm -hmm. and generate sacks, things like that. Where do you stand in that regard right now, do you think? Well, I think in our system, it's, not, it's, not, it's our system. I mean, our goal is to affect the passer, and whether it's sacks, uh, pressure, whatever it may be, disrupting the pass rush, lane, uh, the throwing lanes for the quarterback, that's our goal each week to do that. So, I mean, you know, how do we do that? We try to take advantage of, um, you know, mismatches, just like the offense is trying to take advantage of mismatches against us. So, I mean, that's the goal, and we'll see how it comes to fruition on Sunday. But what have you seen? Well, we've seen again. I mean, if I if I to go back right now, my mind is so far. Is, I'm on Baltimore right now. Just not not to be rude. Or anything, I'm just thinking about Baltimore right now. So, what happened in the spring? What happened in uh, training camp? I mean, that really doesn't matter right now. It matters what we're going to do today in terms of game planning it tomorrow. What the guys what we do on the practice field. But it's been a lot of positive. Guys are buying into what we're trying to teach them, and so I feel good about that. I'll ask a question that. Mm -hmm. It's prefaced in the past, but it's forward looking. Mm -hmm. um, the Tampa week, uh, Minka expressed, I don't know if this is just satisfaction is a word, but saying as a fact that he might not be in, at that point in time, a position that would suit his strengths. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like that issue has been rectified and you guys have Minka deployed in a way that maximizes his ability? You got to ask Minka. But to me, Tampa week doesn't matter to me at all right now. All my attention is focused on Baltimore and whoever we put out there to help us beat Baltimore and the, the spots we put them at, that's what my focus is on. So, so your, your level of confidence then for the Baltimore game? Then. My level of confidence for how, we'll again, we're still, we're yeah. still building towards it for our, our defense and for all the players out there. We're going to try to make sure that we're putting all our guys in the right spot to, to be able to capitalize on their strengths and capitalize against their weaknesses. I'm doing well. Yourself? I just forgot to ask you a question. I was prepared. I just want to say hello. <laughs> all right. Good, good. All right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. How do, um, I want to ask you this. Uh, who are some players on this defense you feel the other players kind of gravitate towards and look towards the leadership? Um, I think, you know, the leadership uh, element is probably coming from uh, our the play and, you know, We'll see how it plays out throughout the season, but um, I know you know there's guys on the defense that have a voice, and you know those are the guys that guys gravitate to. But you know right now, with us focused on Baltimore, I mean again, I mean I don't talk about leadership all that much. I mean it'll come as it comes within that locker room for those guys. I mean main thing we gotta be who, who's gonna be the leader focused on Baltimore. That's the thing, and I know our head coach is the leader of this team. I know that. And I know that's who I'm following. That's the leader I'm following. He, I know he knows how to prepare. I know he's going to put us in the right spot. So that's the leader I'm going to follow right now. That's why, that's why I'm, in terms of leadership, that's what I would be worried about. What are, what are the challenges that Lamar Jackson presents? I mean, Lamar Jackson's a dynamic player. Um, you know, people talk about what he does with his feet. But, I mean, like the guy, I mean, the guy could throw the ball. I mean, the guy could throw the ball. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous weapon to deal with. Um, with the elite speed, the uh, being elusive, and then having the ability to get the ball down the field, ability to check it down, throw the intermediate throws, you could definitely see some growth uh, from rookie year to now, from the, the limited time in the preseason. So, I mean, it's definitely a big challenge. I mean, but I mean, he's not the only challenge out there. I mean, they got a good old line. They're physical. They're tough. Um, guys play to the whistle with an edge. The tight ends, they, I mean, they'll block you. I mean, block you better than. I mean, the most groups you've seen, I mean, like, and they, and they come at you and they're not scared about it, they're not shy, they're willing blockers and they're good at it. Uh, the receivers, they block in the run game. I mean, and, you know, they got dynamic playmakers, you know. So, I mean, 
it's a bunch of challenges they have. Plus, again, I keep their coaching staff. I mean, from the head coach to the coordinator to the position coach, these are all guys that have had success and are, um, are pretty good coaches and uh, understand offensive football, understand, you know, Coach Harbaugh, understand the whole scheme of the thing, Be, having been a special teams coordinator and head coach. I mean, he understands it all. I mean, it's a tough challenge. It's a tough challenge. It seems with that organization, the faces in the locker room change, but the system and the, the, the idea, the culture mm -hmm. they have remains mm -hmm. the same. Is that what you guys kind of want to build here, is something that's sustainable? And right now, I mean, you got to talk to Flo about, I'm, my focus right now is focused on how we're going to get ready for Baltimore. That's what I mean. I, I mean, I can't, I mean, you got to talk to Flo about, you want to know about the, that stuff. I'm, my focus is on Baltimore right now and how we want to be out there on the field. I know we want to do this. We want to be smart. We want to be tough. We want to be disciplined. And that's what our head coach wants, and that's what we're going to try to do. Yeah, yeah you might have been asked this probably mm -hmm. before, but what's, I guess, your general philosophy on a dual threat quarterback? In high mm -hmm. uh, well, you, I mean, who isn't a dual threat quarterback? I mean, maybe. I mean, but, you know, <laughs> but, like, who isn't a dual threat quarterback? I mean, these guys – they present challenges because these guys are mobile and they could get they could get you they could get out of bad plays or seemingly like broken down plays or broken plays they could get out of that that's one challenge you know like okay you cover them all right here you go you got the rush somebody misses a sack oh no now it turns into a scramble play i mean that that's tough okay then in terms of the the the, the zone read and quarterback stuff i mean that's that's a whole different challenge right there you know the different options on that so but it, it presents a challenge but you know i think you know it, it makes you know, you gotta work at it, and I mean it's just you know it's it's still football at the end of the day, but it's, it's definitely a challenge.